Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Bastions and Basilisks. I am Calvin. I am Brandon. Uh, and this episode, we are going to talk about our favorite subclasses. Um, you know, if you ever want to go first, just let me know. I just, I'm the one already talking, so it makes the most sense for me to go first. Yeah, that's how I kind of see it. Like, yeah, it'd be just, kind of I, weird for you to, like, stop, and it's just yeah, like... Yeah, I just, you know, I, I didn't want to be, off. like, I didn't want to feel, make you feel like I'm bulldozing you and be like, no, I always talk first. No, I, I literally I'm the white talk. guy. I always get to go first. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we just get straight into political uh, shit right out the gate, because... I'm, That's usually how it goes nowadays. Yeah, I'm aware of my privilege. Um, so my one of my favorites. Uh, so we're gonna do this uh, three favorite subclasses that we've played, and then two that we would like to play. Um, so it's gonna be we're gonna try to pick the shorter. Uh, so no sidetracking, me. Um, <laughs> All sidetracking. Really I know. Hard. I know. We're already sidetracking. Um, okay, so. Uh, one of the ones I've gotten to play thus far that I really, really enjoyed was the Echo Knight from the Wild Mount book. Um, it's it's a lot of fun um, tactically. As a person who likes tact, like tactical movement, um, I had a blast playing it because um, I have a thing that I can move around and then switch places with, or as I like to call, Blue Skadoo. Blue Skadoo. Yeah, I would if you know anything about Blue Skadoo. Uh, yeah, I would blue skidoo. That's what I would call. It. I was like, I'm gonna blue skidoo, and then I switch places with the with my echo, um, and it was it was a lot of fun, um, getting extra attacks from other spaces, uh, which I actually used uh, an, a bow and was shooting. I was in a cave and my echo was out of the cave, and then I used my echo to shoot at a wyvern that was in the sky, like just just stuff like that. Like just you're like it can't see me like. It can't just come out over and attack my normal form, so I'll just send my echo out there and just pew, pew, pew. like it was just it was just a lot of fun, um, and I, I didn't get, we didn't get super high, so I didn't get to enjoy any of like the higher abilities. I think one of them is you get to if it dies, you get temporary hit points. Uh, I think you could have multiple echoes, um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. And then there's the the movement part, you know. You create it, you go up, or like if I'm in a prison, I could just create an echo outside of the prison, and then just blue skidoo, and now I'm no longer in prison. It's just it's one of those things that like you think about like different ways that having a something that you could teleport to as a bonus action. You know, it's just it's one of those things that that was a lot of fun to play around with. So. I'm not gonna lie, that is pretty good, and I I, I just figured out my second subclass uh also a class i haven't played but i've created another character for so i'm, I'm good on my end but echo knight i've never played it i think my friend ed it, it, again you'll see him on my uh, uh my channel uh i think he's played one or at Which least he's made a critical character. failure if you aren't aware it's connected to the to this channel but uh yeah i think he's played one it, it's it's a fairly awesome class, what I can tell. It's just fighters and paladins aren't necessarily my thing. Say again. I didn't hear. Anyways. Uh, I said, who ate all my teeth teriyaki? Blame your daughter, more than likely. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. From like it, it, it's something that I thought about. But, uh. I, I haven't played it yet. I, I've been like trying to go into like the RP aspect of like trying to make my character have like a reason to be doing this type of stuff and like make the powers and like go into that type of thing. So that's what I've been focusing on a lot as a classing. So it's that's that, typically that, that's where I get stuff. Usually, how a lot of my my characters start is I usually pick like race subclass first, and then I work back and like background, and then I kind of work back from there because it's like why is my like. You're not, I'm not just, I guess Echo Knight might make sense based on how my brother did it. Technically, my character was from an alternate reality of Wildmount. I'm not from this Wildmount. And so uh, when I got shunted over to this Wildmount, essentially, my Echo is actually my, this reality's 
form of myself. Like it's a whole thing. And that, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, it's it's very like I was like it's very Bioshock Doctor Infinite. Bullshit. It's very Bioshock Infinite, and I vibe so hard with it. Um, I love Bioshock. Same. Uh, and so yeah. It's, it's, I always, I always work back from what the character is and then I build the character from there to justify. Cause if, if, uh, if I'm not a purple dragon knight, which, which I'll talk about later, why at level three am I suddenly a purple dragon knight? Like, you know, it makes no sense. It has to, you kind of have to, it doesn't matter what my background is as long as somewhere in my story I can justify, you know, maybe I did some knight training, but then I got, became a criminal or something and maybe I eventually can get back into it. Like, it doesn't matter. It's just... I mean, it doesn't matter really. It should be like, I just decided I want to be this at level three or level two or level one or like, you know, but yeah, I agree that the role playing aspect of getting into it is nicer. So what's your first one? Cause we're trying so, we want it. We want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so obviously like everyone knows so far, I'm a huge blood hunter fan. It, my first one is going to be order of the uh, ghost Slayer, just for the sheer fact. It was like my first one. It was a very fun class. Uh, I really enjoyed at the time. It had Rite of the Dawn, you know, the radiant uh, ruin thing that you could use. Uh, it, it was very nice being able to see radiant as a thing that you can use as a, like, attached to a melee weapon and mm -hmm. such like that. Like, right. it, it kind of gave me Dark Souls vibes. Also, you know, mm -hmm. there's the Witcher that it was based off of right. and stuff like that. So it, it was really cool. And it being a class specifically for hunting, you know, besides the monster slayer, which was part of the Rangers, like, you know, there's not an actual pure class that I can recall that is designed for specifically monster hunting. So I thought it'd be pretty cool. And that was what I ended up getting into. So the most well-known that I do know before they started doing like the more up-to-date versions, I think like I got like I don't remember which edition I have, but it's like when they got like the fucking mark now, which at the time, really nice blood curses. They changed it a lot to make it more balanced and stuff like that because there, there was the one time that I took half the health off of a Tarask by doing a blood curse of mutual suffering, which if you amplify it, it gives you full damage of what the whatever target does to you. So I took half the health of a Tarask off by oh. it one-shotting me. So oh. it literally halfway killed the fucking thing. So that's how I ended up going about it. So that, that's also a very big reason why I enjoyed the Blood Hunter. It's like there's a lot of like things that you can do. Uh, there was Blood Curse of Purgation, which gave you like, uh, if you amplified it, any creature that you choose uh, automatically saves a uh, for a poison check or something like that or for being poisoned. So I would use that as a role play thing of uh, making my friend become sober after he took a shit ton of sh like shots or drinking a fuck ton of booze. So he'd be like, why am I not drunk? And he's just downing alcohol. And it's just like, hey. <laughs> well, yeah. you, I mean, you can cast remove poison on him too. Yeah, but it didn't cost like, uh, it, right. all it did was cost like health, if I'm correct. So like it wasn't a spell slot or anything. So it's real funny, but that's what I could do. I know it did cost technically a slot, but that usually rested within time, so. But that's the stupid stuff that uh, I would come up with. Uh, what's your second favorite class? Um, I'm going to skip the order just because I knew you were going to pick something. Uh, and I, I'm assuming that there's a possibility that we want, we ha we share one. And we've discussed it before. Order of the Lycan? Yes, that is my second one. So we're probably going to come up with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I explained that. I, I mean, I only got to play it as... I, I made it specifically because... I was like, oh, this class at level three gets advantage on smelling and hearing uh, checks, uh, perception checks, which means plus five to their passive perception checks for those things. So, I, like I told you, I built the character specifically to have a ridiculous passive perception, um, which is worse than when the GM allowed me to get a robe of eyes. So then I had a 29 for all three, hearing, smelling, and seeing. Um, so, but... Besides that, like, that's the ridiculous reason I started the character, and, and so I built a character kind of poorly, and um, I was going to switch, I think, characters eventually. Uh, but th that group was really fun. We, we still need to play again sometime. I need to bug them now. Um, but besides that, having a class, like you've like the, the Witcher class, uh, the you know, they have a lot of cool abilities, and they're... Um, 
their different potions or whatever you want to call them or abilities. No, they're not potions. It's their. I didn't play it curses. enough. They're blood curses. Yeah, they're, they're like they're like oh I can do this thing or I can do that thing. Like it, it feels kind of dabbles and feels a little bit like um like invocations. Mm-hmm. Um. From, from warlocks so it has kind of that thing it's kind of a uh, situation specific um but i really like that too because some if you're like shit i don't this might be useful at some point like this is one of those like you're trying to cover your own kryptonite type of thing uh, you know you, you have a member of your party who has a weakness of this and you're like you know i'm just gonna i'm just gonna you know i'm just gonna um uh something like that you know um which is a lot of fun. And then the ability to go into the wolf form. So it feels like... Um, it felt a lot like playing... Actually, you know what? Probably why I enjoyed playing it. Because it, pe- it felt like playing a werewolf monk. Yeah, it, it because, did. Have but like a, were- like a werewolf, vamp- uh, werewolf barbarian monk. Because while in my wolf form, I have uh, mm-hmm. resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage... As long as it's not magical or silver. Maybe it's just silver. Um, which I'm like, uh, yes. Uh, which saved my, my ass many times. It's specifically one fight where we accidentally picked a fight with an entire camp of lizard men. Um, yeah. It's like one fight that accidentally went into another fight that went into another fight. Um, and we accidentally killed like 30 or 40 lizard folk and like one fight <laughs> the conversation before this about having genocide and yeah you, you actually have a D. it was case an of- accident <laughs> we didn't do it on purpose we that group we always tried talking it's not our fault that we didn't understand them and they didn't understand us we tried and we it's just we also rolled poorly it, it was the dice honestly we it was the language barrier and then we tried rolling to try to communicate and then we would just always roll shitty and we're just like I guess we're murdering. Here I go killing again. Like, like, you know, like, so. The entire thing of the language barrier got, uh, get it, the language barrier. If one of them spoke common, man, I swear. No, because we wanted to communicate. We tried. Like, hey, no, we, we're not here to fight. And then fighting started. We're like, well, we're not going to fucking lose. Like, no, I get it's that. not our first resort, but it's your last resort. Um, like, uh, but yeah, and so like being able to kind of be a tanky, tanky monk almost, because they're you know you do your claws which use monk hand to hand damage. It scales like that. Uses your dexterity like. It's, also, you can blood write them. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, I know, and it counts both hands. So it's like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm doing a d6 of lightning damage with each hit. So I go, claw, claw, other claw. Like yeah, it's just like. They're DPS, they're tank, and they're a little bit arcane, you know, st- stuff over there in the side. Like, I forgot, I, I was like, why did I like them so much? Because I haven't played one in like two years. But I'm like, that's why I fucking liked them. Because they're a barbarian monk werewolf witch. <laughs> like, they're, they're fucking OP is what they are. They're pretty they really good. are. <laughs> like, you basically got into like a lot of the stuff that I wanted. Also just the RPing standpoint for me is just mm-hmm. like I said, like when I was at Fire Genazi, I was a fucking fire werewolf. Like I just right. being able to do that and then if you're playing a smaller race, making the joke of like playing a gnome and turning it to a chihuahua, like all that shit. So I found that funny. So also the hybrid form, you know, where you get like partial benefits you got like a like a strength boost and a couple other things. You are able to use your weapon. The reason why I did that was because I was able to use three actions with my sword which was 3d10 cold damage plus 1d10 fucking uh like the slashing and it's so, the, their later abilities are really cool too like i never got to their like i was like um regeneration yes please like, i never got past level 10 as a lichen throw, i got to five so funny. you got further than it's me real good. it's yeah. real good i really i want to fucking it. play one again now i have to now i forgot yeah about. i would like to also i'm not gonna lie order the lichen throw I'm going to make a fucking uh, Air Genazi and just make him turn into literal mist, like how the original uh, lore for werewolves would be, where they turn into mist and reappear and reform. That'd be funny as fuck. That'd be pretty funny. So that, I'm glad we both had Order to Like and yeah. Throw Fun. I, I knew you were going to have, I assumed at least one of yours was going to be Bloodhunter, if not more than one. Yeah, it was definitely the first two. My third one is not Bloodhunter. I was thinking about making it the Order of the uh, Newton. 
because I realized how actually useful that is after playing it and to set into a Vernus, which I know you hate. <laughs> but it's, it, it can come in handy. Is, for that, that, is that the uh, one that's more, more like the Witcher because they have their tonics? And yeah, that, it's actually based off the Witcher. You have the potions that only they can brew, and if someone else drinks them, they basically get hurt or yeah. die. Yeah, one of, my, one of my friends in the game with my Echo Knight, my friend Salem was playing one, and he dealt. He went really deep into the like. That's another thing with the role playing of it. Like role playing my order of the lichen, I had it that my character was. I think I've explained this before. My character was essentially there was a curse on her family, so I was actually cursed with lycanthropy from birth, and so I trained to become a order of the lichen to control my transformations. And like it's it's the same thing, kind of you know the order of the mutant. He went into it like he was taking because I was a dragonborn. He's like, oh, you're strong. I'm gonna use some of your blood. He's like, can I take some of your blood? I'm like, yeah, take as much as you want. I don't care. Like, like he's like, oh, can I take some of your scales or can I take this? Like he like he played it up as like an alchemist who's trying. Like he played up the whole thing, and so that's very much. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun when you can incorporate additional role playing. Um, uh, what is it called? Uh, like habits into your character based oh, yeah. on what your subclass is. Um, so my third favorite one that I've played is actually the Sun Soul Monk. Um, I've only played it as my um, Lobster Monk, um, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. And actually, at one of the times, because essentially you can shoot it out of anything. Um, so the first time I used it, because we made level three and then we got into a fight, and then we fought something that isn't actually in fifth edition. And it was a bullshit fight. Um, essentially, there's a thing in third edition that like eats magic. Ew. And so my brother counted my my sun blasts as magic energy. So it was just eating my magic. That really sucks. Um, yeah, um, because the first time I got to use it, I pulled a Godzilla, where essentially I had the the light start at the back of my tail and like and just come out like a beam of light come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would like shoot it like like hyper beam from like uh, like Pokemon. Pokemon like Pokemon with like Krabby and whatnot or just out of my beam uh, out of my claw. Um, it was just a lot of fun. Like it's it's the radiant damage. Like it's it's not it's probably as far as like monk overpowered goes. It's probably like mid tier. Um, but being able to shoot thirty feet like you don't appreciate how useful that is until you get to do it. Like. In, uh, we went into, um, I'm trying to remember, the Forge of Fury. And essentially, like, uh, the tabaxi fish out of water, he walked up and he was like, oh, there's an archer. I can see, like, there's, like, arrow slits. He's like, there's an archer. So essentially, it's an ambush. So I was like, okay. And I was like, it's my turn. And I knew it was coming. So it's not an ambush. I'm not surprised. So I go up, I step out. And I and an arrow comes flying at me, and I rolled my you know my catch arrows. I caught it, and then I was like, <laughs> which is the best. I I have an idea for a monk wizard, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I just so it's just like, <clears throat> like it's like, <clears throat> hmm, <clears throat> and then like I sun blasted because at that point I had changed races because we kind of train plane hopped a couple times, so he let us kind of mm -hmm. soft wreck soft uh, retcon um so i changed to a shatter kai um so i was still at like pale um yeah and so i just poof, and i blasted through an arrow hole and got the guy in the face and he was still standing we're, we're going we're like going arrow slit to arrow slit fighting shooting or whatever we i go to i think the third one i step out I blast, and it was the same guy. Essentially, he had, like, gone over two slits, and I blasted him and killed him. I was like, I feel kind of bad for that guy. His face is covered in, like, soot, essentially. Or it's, like, sunburned. Like, it's just, like... but He's like, not actually dead. He's just got cancer. Right. And so, like, that's... Like, like that's a lot of fun. It's, like... And then another fight, and they were, like, behind some, some things, and people are coming up, and normally I could break rank and run over and start flailing my fist I was like why and I'm like boom, 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 boom. like you know it's having the option I mean I could do darts or whatever or, or but I'm like having ranged sunlight I mean some of the other abilities were like breath weapon of sunlight or shoot a fireball of sunlight like it's thematically it's 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 really it's nifty it's like not super game breaking or or anything like that but it's you know I'm a 
if a vampire steps to me, that vampire is going to regret it. Or if I go back yeah. to the sh- if I went to the Shadowfell and explored what it was to be a Shatterkai. Um, now that I'm a Shatterkai, oh, yeah. which my brother actually in that game he he did the um, the sleep the trance as kind of connecting to the history of elves and like oh. it's like kind of like a. So, so I knew the history of elves, sort of, and it's I used it in my game as a connecting to, you can kind of kind of dream talk to other elves in trance when you're in the trance, like it's not easy and you have to already know them or you have to know of them. But it was a whole thing. But yeah, like Sun Soul Monk is just a lot of fun. I mean, monks are great in general, but Sun Soul Monk is like just having a couple of like AOE like ranged or AOE abilities, and then like one that's like if somebody grabs me, I'm just like. I am sunlight, and they're like, ah, shit, you are sunlight, and, like, they take some damage, which isn't, you know, it's just one of those things, like, playing that in, in an undead-themed game or something, you're like, get over here, vampires, or get over here, zombies, I'ma fuck your day up. I can already imagine you're playing an Asthmer, and those things are already connected to, like, you know, angels and shit, so you're just doing that, it's like, I... And the son of an angel, and just the glow and everything. <laughs> it's like you get a halo. You're like, ah! Anyway, that's me. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Have fun. Man, I, I actually just now forgot what my third fucking one. Oh, I remember. So we've already talked about it. Uh, it's actually the Oathbreaker Paladin. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy it. I played probably. Paladin's like my second most uh, or third most played class. I really enjoy the rogue, but like it doesn't have my favorite per se in terms of uh, subtypes or subclasses. But the Oathbreaker Paladin, it's just it's got really nifty abilities. And again, like you can go back to your actual oath originally. And right. it, you, you can't do that in many other or if any other uh, classes. So it's just really nice that I can do that. Like I've played the Blood Domain in Taldore, I think. For the cleric, like it could, be, it could be just if well, cleric would be hard to change back. Yeah, but like I would like, say, a I lot some really... classes could be justified, but I think you're right. And paladin could be justified the easiest with it also being heavily RP. Like you know, it's it's not like oh, I'm a I'm an assassin and then I want to become a phantom or you know or something yeah. or I'm a I'm a ranger of this, and I'm a ranger of that, or I'm a a, a wizard of necromancy, but I want to switch to evocation. Like, t- wizard yeah. makes the least sense, actually, probably for switching. Um, unless, unless it's something you're... that is already part of your character, which, like, my wizard, my wizard would have easily switched to scribe, order of the scribes, because that was pretty much on the dot what my character was, <laughs> like, all about books and just the whole thing. Anyway, you talk yeah. about you. But yeah, that's uh. That, that's really it like i just really enjoyed that i like the the entire paladin thing with smite i enjoyed the spells that i got with them and the abilities that's mostly it just the mechanics of it and yeah the rping was nice so that's really it <laughs> like just cut paste dry right, right there for you and mechanically the uh one of the, their their aura ability where like undead get bonus to, like they and undead in their aura get bonus to damage yeah i think like that you're like that's one of those, like, you build a team that is undead-based, like, where you use undead, like, you know, a necromancy wizard and a, a Oathbreaker Paladin and a Death Domain Cleric and, like, a Phantom Rogue. And now you got, like, this undead-themed party, which sounds great, and I'm going to write that down somewhere. Uh, but, like, you're like, I have these undead, and they're just, they're going up there with the Paladin, and it's like, sup, bitches? And all these zombies are like, um, hit like a truck. Um... All right, so I'm not going to go too deep into... I figure we we go too deep. I'll do both of mine, you, then you can do both of yours. And, you know, once All again, right. not going too deep into it, just kind of why we want to try them out once again, because we're already at 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had mentioned it, uh, Phantom Rogue, just because the concept is really cool. I'm, I'm an undead-obsessed person in general. Um, so the whole idea of fan, the Phantom Rogue and the skills thing... And then the advantage on death saving throws, you can't combine that with like a hollow one who gets, you know, if it's 16 to 20, they stand back up. Like there, uh, there are a lot of builds like that would probably be part of the build, right? <laughs> Side tangent real quick. I want to make a, an artificer bard rogue who's three bard, six artificer, 11 rogue. 
that is just purely a skill monkey. Because with with Artificer, any skill that I any tool skill that I am proficient in, I have double my proficiency. Because Jeez. of Bard, you're proficient in every skill, which includes tools. And then um, uh, Rogue, if you're proficient in in the skill, with at level eleven they get the ability that if they roll lower than a ten, it's counted as a ten. Yeah. So I can never get lower than ten, but I have to get to level twenty for it all matter. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Phantom Rogue looks really cool. A lot of a lot of the abilities are kind of nifty. Would be kind of role play f- fun, especially in a more undead themed game. Uh, talking to the the ghosts or the people inside of your 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 medallion things, um, and then Purple Dragon Knight. Um, a gets disrespected too much, and that is once again that is another one that would be a good counter to if we're, if you're building a the the evil und oh, well evil necromancy is not evil, um, but if you're building the the undead themed group that I just came up with, um, and you wanted to build another group that kind of meshes well together or t- assists each other, Purple Dragon Knight because like I think they get in a thing where um, if they use their healing. Uh, their their second wind, um, they can heal up to three allies for their fighter level. Um, so if you're the fighter, so you're probably you have probably have the highest AC and the highest hit points. So if you you get bombed by something, if you if you catch a fireball, and everybody goes down, as long as no not everybody dies, assuming it's a party of four, mind you, mm-hmm. um, you're like oh that hurt action surge. I heal for a D10 plus my fighter level. Um, plus my constitution modifier. Um, everybody else in my party heals for fighter level. So, you know, that means that everybody's standing up. That means that you can you can get the cleric back on their feet. You can get the bard back up. Like, you can get... That makes them suddenly, like, an off-healer almost. Yeah. Um, and then their action surge is like, oh, here's my action surge. An ally within 30 feet of me also can make an attack as the part of their reaction, which you use that with, like, an assassin... Or two assassins really? at seventeen. Okay. You you all go first, and now the assassin, assassin one assassinates, assassin two assassinates. I use my turn. I go ape shit. Still standing, cool. I use my action surge, which means that both of my assassin allies can now sneak attack, assassinate again. Like it's just one of those okay. things that you're like, uh, that that's the beginning of that fight. We and especially because action surge. I don't know. If action surge might not be the one that comes back after a short rest, but it is. I know that healing the healing one is, um, which once again I think, they, I think you get them both. Um, so you're like, let's do it again. So it's just it's a lot of fun. Like it would be it's it seems and you know they have like they they get stuff that is RP like they get trained in persuasion I think or diplomacy like there is RP stuff also built into the class like kind of like the Kensai gets you know like stuff like that like it's built in. To, that it's not just like hey, we are we are just killers you know type of thing so no i get it yeah, those are two really good classes mine are only connected because i've made characters for them but never got to play them uh the first one is a college of glamour like we were i think i said earlier mm-hmm. i'm not sure if it was on recording or not mm-hmm. and the second one is the uh pact of the chain i think it is warlock the one where you get like a, a, a an imp as your pet or some shit uh so well that's not a subclass probably, though that's that's one of the packs. That's different. Oh, that's a packed. Fuck, I don't remember then. <laughs> I thought that was a, a subclass. No, shit. It's all, all of them choose a pack at third level. Pack of the chain is just one of the packs they choose. They get their subclass Ooh. at first level. The fuck is this? Fuck. See, I don't remember. See, I thought the uh, packed was the. Uh, no, was every, a everybody gets a pack. All all of them get a packed at three. It's it's sort of like a subclass because it's. Yeah, that's it's, why I thought it was. It's it's kind of oh, like a shit. focal point for the. It is you know a deciding factor in their class, but it is isn't. It's yeah, fine. first it's level fine. packed. We'll d- we'll discuss packed warlocks room. at some point. Uh, yeah, yeah okay. I don't fuck with warlocks very actively, so hence why I don't know. <laughs> shit, what the fuck is a packed boom? Okay. Anyway, you you got one. Talk about your one. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I completely <laughs> didn't fine. know that. I completely thought that it was different. Uh, I it's know because you true. get it at third level, so you like it's tracks yeah. that a lot of classes get stuff at third level, so it makes sense. Yeah, that's, like, I oh, compl- that's obviously my. Yeah, that's where I went with that. Uh, shit, one that I haven't played. So, but why glamour? For the why of glamour, it was it was a basically purely just uh, 
like role play. Like it was a character that I made, uh, like I was talking to you earlier, as an Eladrin. Her name was Ella. And the reason why her name was Ella was actually from Ella from Rain vs. Six Siege or Ella, however you want to say it. Uh, so I got it from that. And then I kind of made a con, uh, like a, a, a side remark that her name's actually Ella because it's short for Eladrin. Uh, <laughs> so it was a stupid like thing. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah. If, if like, you under, understood me because I played uh, Siege a lot at the time, then you get that joke. And if you understood the Eladrin joke, then you got that. But I really enjoyed it. She was going to be a very, like, persuasion-based character, healing, like, support character that Glamour kind of goes with. Plus the aspect of them consistently trying to be a people-pleaser type of thing, like how I imagined a bard would be. So that's kind of, like, the reason why I went with Glamour now. For my second one, <sighs> fucking, isn't there a necromancer for the wizard? I yeah, think there is. The school of necromancy. Yeah, I don't know if that's a uh, subclass though. It is. No, yeah, all it of the is? schools for all of the okay. schools of. Thank God. I actually dislike. I actually dislike it, somewhat. I, I think it could be done better because I've definitely yeah. read it. I wish it was a lot more undead raised in my opinion like, like there's not some much. of the abilities are great they're level 10 ability that you have resistance to necrotic damage and your level can't be you can't like your level can't be decreased or your whatever like like i know they don't decrease levels in fifth edition but you can't be hit with like certain ability like you're immune to it and i'm like or no it's your max hit point but it can't be decreased yeah which is a lot just of considering some that. things you fight in it's just like oh they hit you and then they just keep the like they keep fucking the whittling away the the Chas- Does the Chasm decrease your max hit points? Or am I no, thinking I, so? You just did a video Chas- on it, which is, I think, the only yeah. reason I'm thinking of it. Yeah, uh, the Chasm. I know that's the, the bug-looking one, right? Yes. The one that almost okay. TPK'd I'm... Matt's entire group. In what fucking campaign was that? In campaign two. Was the the early one? No, campaign two is with the one. No, that like the played. early on in it because I, I don't, don't know. I don't. I don't know. I, I assume I. Don't, I didn't actually. Oh watch wow! It. Jesus, these are. I forgot. These things have a lot more. Uh... It's their like aura thing that. Um... So it has a drone ability. Yeah. Which. Which prevent which can disrupt spellcasting. I think right. Anyway, this so, isn't a monster video. This is a <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm trying to find it specifically so if I, if I can. Uh... But yeah, like it's no, it's like they're level they're level because they get it at level two. Uh, so no, wizards get it at level two. Uh, they're re- like they're dark harvest or whatever the hell it's called. Like they getting, fall unconscious is what happens. Getting getting hit points, getting healed because I don't think it's ten hit points. I think you get healed, which is different from. Maybe I'm wrong, but you get something. Like even if it's just mm-hmm. ten hit points, it's still useful. Um, yeah, ten hit points get taken away before your actual hit points, which yeah, is so, in my opinion, useful. So yeah, uh, so that's that's pretty cool. And then level six, they're they're undead. They can summon and maintain more undead, but that's a whole thing that I don't want to get into right now about. I, why, I wish... why it irritates me in fifth edition how they nerf necromancers. Um, yeah that was my thing like i wish like there was so much more necromancy related stuff because i whenever i want to be a necromancer i want to eventually add, like, like d2 high levels like diablo 2 yeah like, that's I want that's to be, like, like do it yeah like, I which want is to what i had it in third edition but it's yeah they definitely nerfed it because you could have i mean in, in fifth edition you have so many undead it's ridiculous so they probably Dude, i have a bestiary full of different undead from nord games which those are actually pretty decent but like Jesus, I would like to actually play that because I know that's one of them I want to play. But you know, considering the fact that the Pact of the Chain is not a subclass, thinking that it was, but yeah, that's something I would do. Anyway, all right, we're gonna call it there. <laughs> yeah, it's a very after long thirty-five game. minutes, so it's five minutes shorter than normal. Uh, sure. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for watching. I'm Calvin. I'm Brandon. <laughs> Catch you guys later. See you all later. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And now you get to listen to the outro song. And that's the outro song.